We started the Rush Cartilage Restoration Program approximately 25 years ago. We've now become one of the world's leading centers for cartilage transplantation. Due to the clinical and basic science research that we've performed at Rush, we have a comprehensive program to manage your articular cartilage problem. Cartilage restoration is generally preserved for younger patients because they typically have less severe disease that can be treated by the types of techniques and procedures that I will discuss. It's critical to understand that there's a delineation between a patient who is appropriate for cartilage repair or restoration versus a patient who is more amenable to the treatment of osteoarthritis. Patients with localized cartilage loss typically present to us at an age that's less than 35. Now, occasionally we will see patients in an older age group, but it is more common that as we age, patients really develop arthritis rather than having localized loss of cartilage. So it's less about age and chronology than it is about the amount of disease that we accumulate as we age and the ability to respond to these treatments that are non-knee replacement related. Many patients who have cartilage loss in the knee are young and otherwise not suitable candidates for knee replacement surgery. Typically, patients will complain of weight bearing or activity related pain and swelling. Our goal in treating patients with articular cartilage disease and or meniscus deficiency is to do the least amount necessary to get them well. If a patient has no symptoms with known meniscus loss or a cartilage defect, we allow them to engage in activities as tolerated, as there is insufficient data that shows that participation in activities will make that disease worse. If, however, a patient has symptoms due to the local loss of cartilage, a so-called focal cartilage defect, or has symptoms due to a previous meniscectomy where the meniscus is removed, those symptoms can be managed with cartilage restoration. At times, non-surgical treatment can be beneficial, and that's something we would discuss in the office. Assuming that non-surgical treatment, such as physical therapy or injections, is insufficient to modify your symptoms to the point where you're satisfied, we will discuss surgical intervention. It is not uncommon that an index arthroscopy, a procedure where we use an arthroscope or camera to ascertain the level of damage will be required prior to deciding definitive treatment in terms of cartilage replacement. In the event that that arthroscopy leads to a determination that you need further treatment, there are several options that we utilize that depend upon the location of your defect, the size, and the involvement of the underlying bone. It is important to understand that there are many treatments to replace loss of cartilage, and there may be more than one way to get it right, per se, to eliminate your symptoms. What I will discuss with you is a progression of surgical treatments that might be decided upon to repair your damaged cartilage. It might or could include the benefits of debridement, where I go in arthroscopically through a minimally invasive procedure to essentially remove flaps of cartilage and clean off the edges of that defect. In some cases, patients will be rendered less symptomatic by that simple procedure. Small defects in certain dislocations might respond to a procedure called marrow stimulation. That's a procedure where we poke small holes in the bone intentionally using a minimally invasive drill to get access to your body's stem cells. Those cells may produce scar cartilage in the defect to create a surface that will otherwise absorb load and reduce your symptoms. An alternative to that with small defects might include a procedure called an osteochondral autograft. An osteochondral autograft is a procedure where I take a small plug of bone from one part of your knee and transplant it to another part of your knee. That's typically utilized for very active patients who have small defects in the neighborhood of 10 to 11 millimeters in size. As I move along the lineage, defects of the kneecap, the patella, or the groove, defects in very young patients that might be present in multiple locations, primary treatment where there's been no previous treatment to repair those defects, might benefit from a procedure called MACI, Matrix Associated Cartilage Implantation. This is a procedure where we take a biopsy of your own cartilage, grow it in a laboratory, and come back with a second procedure where the cells themselves are grown on a collagen membrane 
and that membrane is placed into the defect to use your own cells to regrow cartilage. An additional solution might or could include something called an osteochondral allograft. That's where a donor, someone who otherwise donates their heart, liver, lungs, could also be used to supply cartilage and bone to replace larger, deeper areas of cartilage and bone loss. In addition, we have a number of FDA clinical trials that are looking at novel techniques to replace cartilage. All of these options that we might or could use to repair your articular cartilage will be discussed in the office. Finally, it's important to understand that many patients don't just have an isolated cartilage problem. They may be missing part or all of their meniscus, they may have a ligament tear, and they may have malalignment where they're bow-legged or knock-kneed. These are things we will also discuss in the office setting.